like many of you, when I first got into reptiles, I got addicted straight away. I wanted to keep every reptile that I could get my hands on, and to fit as many animals as possible at home, I thought reptile racks would be a good idea. But after using reptile racks for less than a year, I've made the decision to not use them again. I realized that the reason why I enjoy keeping reptiles is the whole process of creating habitats for them and watch them display their natural behaviors. I don't buy my reptiles just so that I can increase the numbers of reptiles in my possession. Since I couldn't see the reptiles much, I simply wasn't getting the joys of reptile keeping when using the racks. I didn't use the racks for quite a few years since then, but now that I'm raising a few more hatchling monitor lizards, I wanted to explore using racks again. The enclosures I built myself tend to be too big and easy for lizards to escape. The commercial glass terrariums aren't completely escape proof either, and I have problems with the glass and mesh top losing too much heat and humidity. Tubs in a rack seems promising. The small tubs help the hatchlings feel safe and secure, and can ensure them to find food easily. A rack also means that I can keep fewer lizards together, or even keep them by themselves. This results in less injuries from fights, and I can easily monitor the individual's health and growth rates. From a cost point of view, I can use a single lighting unit or a single heat source to power multiple tubs at a time. It is also overall cheaper to have a rack than have multiple enclosures. Plastic tubs are lightweight and waterproof. This makes cleaning them easy. Finally, when designed well, a rack system can be escape proof. Before jumping straight back into using racks, I want to also consider all the flaws of using racks and try and see if I can make improvements. Similar to glass terrariums, plastic tubs also lose heat easily. Most of the Reptile Rex designs I found online are better suited for snakes and geckos. They have underbelly heat and are not designed to have UV and heat lamps. While most of the rack designs that have UV and heat lamps are built for bearded dragons and the tubs simply sit on the shelf and doesn't have a top. I believe a monitor lizard could easily make an escape, especially when the tubs would need to be filled with things for them to climb. Lastly, a problem with monitors is that they need to have an intense heat source for basking. This is not an issue in a large enclosure, but in a small tub situation, the tubs can easily overheat during a hot day. So after considering both the pros and cons of a standard reptile rack, this is the design I came up with. It is a melamine shelf holding 6 tubs that are around 60 litres in volume. I want the tubs to be as big as possible, but the next size up is going to be too difficult to slide the tub in and out when it's filled with substrate and decor. I went and got the clearest tub that I could find. I know it's not crystal clear, but at least I can see what's going on inside the tubs without opening them and disturbing the lizards. Unlike the traditional reptile racks that use a solid sheet of melamine as the lid for the tubs, I decided to introduce a gap between the tubs and the melamine for the heat lamps and the UV to go. The lights sit on top of an aluminium mesh that acts like the lid for the tubs. I'm using halogen ceiling down lights as the heat source and a single T5 UV lamp for each level. I added sockets into the back of the rack so that most of the wires can be contained within the unit. After testing how the rack operates, I decided to add some polystyrene foam panels at the bottom of the rack and between the two levels of the tubs, so that the heating from below won't increase the temperature of the tubs above too much. I think the colour of the foam would stick out like a sore thumb, so I used a combination of black duct tape and black coal fluid to conceal the foam panels. To combat the heat loss from the plastic tubs and to prevent the temperatures from dropping too low in winter, I added some underfloor heat film to the bottom of each row of tubs. I've covered how I made these heat mats in another video. I think maintaining a stable temperature is important for young monitors. I just feel like they might be more susceptible to drastic temperature drops compared to the adults just because of their body size and limited body reserves. Another point is that keeping them warm should improve their growth rates in theory. The heat mats are plugged into a heat pool thermostat which I've also covered in a separate video. I've set the thermostat to turn on the heating to prevent the temperature from dropping below 20 degrees. 
Another thing I've connected to the same heat cool thermostat are computer fans. Each tub has its own fan sitting above it, which will turn on when the temperature gets above 30 degrees. This provides extra air circulation and is another measure to prevent overheating. The design of the mesh tub is actually the most crucial component of this rack. It is what makes this whole rack works. I decided to go with an aluminium frame because I know it's going to stay straight and won't bow downwards and press on the tubs. It is strong enough that no lizard can flex it so that as long as the aluminium frame surrounds the perimeter of the tubs, the lizards can't escape for sure. The mesh must be made of a metal that can withstand heat. At first I thought of aluminium fly screen as it is heat proof, but I don't like how flimsy and soft they are. So the next option I considered are perforated metal sheets. They are very strong and rigid, but they are too expensive. Welded mesh are also rigid enough if the gauge of the wire is thick enough, but I found that the opening of the mesh are way too big when you're choosing the thick gauge types. I finally settled on the aluminium expanded mesh. It is not too flimsy, so it can hold the weight of the fans and the lights that are sitting above it, and it can also let a decent amount of light through it. I haven't used this rack for a long time, but so far, I consider this build to be a success. This design eliminated or reduced the downforce of a traditional Reptile rack without losing the advantages of a rack system. Hopefully my monitors will thrive in this new setup. Thanks for watching.